All right, I am going to modify this a little bit and show you all what I've actually done. By the way, if you want to get these caps off that are covering the screw holes, you will take just like a screw, sink it in a little bit, and then you can just pull it out. As you can see, this is already modified. What I have done is a Makita battery conversion. The piece that I have in here is from a Makita flashlight. And I'm going to uh, show you a picture of that right now. So what I did with the flashlight is I just cut off the very back part, which is the flashlight portion. Um, on the bottom of this <clears throat> piece, uh, since it's at an angle, I actually had to cut it off, and I'll show you that in a moment. But let's go ahead and just take this apart so I can dive into a little bit more of what I did. Here is kind of what I did. Uh, number one, this area here, this is where a circuit board is. This is what kind of runs everything. Oh, nothing's connected in here. Nothing's working in here. Uh, this is completely bypassed. I think I may have blown something in the circuit board um, when I first hooked up my battery to all this. I think I blew something. My number one goal was to get the motor working. So I hooked the battery up directly to the motor. So as you can see here, there's a blue wire and there's a white wire. It actually was coming out from here. You can see it going into the circuit board. Um, and so the blue wire is your positive, your white wire is your negative. I just happened to feed that around to the front here. And then I have that going to the positive on here, negative on here. By the way, this is how I had to shave this. See that? The next thing that I did is wire this into the system. Black is going all the way down and it's tapping into the white wire right here. So that's my negative. Red is coming around going to this switch. I wanted a switch where I could flip it on and flip it off. The other one was just momentary. You press it and you have to hold it in order to keep the light on. Red wire goes to one side, then it exits the other and comes in and then taps into my positive. Reason I'm taking this apart is when I close my lid, I believe this part of my flashlight is hitting the inside of the cooler and it's making it so it's not shutting all the way. I'm going to undo this because it's just hot glue. But just so you know, this portion here, I use plastic weld, plastic JB weld. Uh, because I needed something that was really, really strong because of the force of this battery going in and taking it out. If I had done this differently, because this was, again, trial and error, I actually tried using the entire housing originally and stuck that in. That's why the hole is so big. If I had known, I would have just cut that off and then made the hole the appropriate size, but I didn't. I just, afterwards, uh, this is just a piece of plastic that I used to fill in. Uh, it doesn't look good. It is what it is, uh, but I'm gonna get to working on this LED light. Uh, you don't really need to see that part, so I will turn this on once everything's finished. All right, got it all put back together. This has been sitting in my garage for like years, and it just had dirt just caked on it. There were like three wasps nests on this thing. Um, and so I got it all cleaned up and it has all the plates, cleaned all those, cleaned off the little ceramic knife that comes with it. Uh, has the bottle opener. I think, if I remember, there it's like magnetic. So let's see. Yep, see how the cap just stays there? It's because it's, that's magnetic. Most important thing is the light and the... light in the blender. I did not hook up the USB part um, because it had fried that LED that was over here originally. Because it fried that, I just didn't know if it was going to also mess up that USB board. And in all honesty, you know, when we go out at this point, we're always uh, carrying backup batteries with us. So that's not so much of an issue. 
Uh, here's that storage area. I still have the original coolest cooler um, Bluetooth speaker, but this thing is not a very good speaker. Uh, so, you know, over the years I've gotten different ones. Um, even this little teeny tiny one uh, puts out better sound <clears throat> than the coolest. The one I always use though is this one. Um, it's a uh, it's a cheap it's a cheap little speaker that my wife got me. It's like a stocking stuffer or, or whatever, but it uh, it holds my phone. It holds like you know, like my iPad Mini. It will hold that, um, and it's just you know decent sound. Uh, it's portable. I love it. This is this is like my favorite Bluetooth speaker. This is the this is what I use whenever I go somewhere, and um, it fits perfectly in here. So like like you know like I said, if we uh, we're gonna have our backup batteries, we can throw it in there as well. And yeah, there you go. My uh, coolest cooler is technically up and running again. The only thing that I'm noticing. Uh, <clears throat> when I did the video earlier, I was adjusting the position of this light just so it was kind of flush with that. So it wasn't going to hit the inside of the cooler, but it's still not laying flat. It's laying flatter back here. Reason it's not laying flat is because of the switch that I installed. It's what's preventing it from laying all the way down. That's why the original one was recessed. So now I understand not that big of a deal for me. Um, I'm, I'm fine. The other thing that the LED did was it allowed you to look inside of the cooler um, if it was dark. So as an example, I, mean, I can kind of see this light is more like a spotlight. See that? But I have noticed if I flip up this lid, then it kind of gives me a view of what's inside. If I also flip this up, then it also gives me a view of what's inside. So, you know, I mean, it still works. This does everything that I need it to do. I'm just happy to have it up and running again. So yeah, there you go. Uh, coolest cooler, Makita battery conversion. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.